Valheim is a multiplayer survival and sandbox video game which is heavily inspired by Norse mythology and created by Swedish developer Iongate Studio and published by Coffee Stain Studios. Valheim takes place in a world where slain Vikings go to prove themselves fit for the halls of Valhalla. As one such, the player begins with nothing and to survive, the player must gather natural resources found throughout the world by foraging or hunting. In this video, I'll be going over the gameplay mechanics, combat and the crafting aspects of Valheim and then giving you 5 reasons as to why you should download this game on the Xbox Game Pass. Valheim Mistlands so I've been quite excited to play this game. It's been in my watch list for a while now. So let's get straight into it. Start a game and create a new character. So not much in the character customization. There's not a lot of options you have for this. I don't know if this will change because this is game preview at the moment. Uh, so they may add some more customization to your character. But at the moment, you've got male, female, and then skin tone. So I think I'll just go for a standard down the middle. As for hair... Let's pick a decent Viking looking hair, shall we? Gathered braids. Oh, that looks pretty good, actually. I quite like that. Gotta give myself a beard. Oh, the first beard looks pretty good, actually. That also looks very good. Oh, we've got the twin tailed. Oh, damn, that is an epic beard. That's a dwarven epic beard. Oh, there's quite a few beard choices. I quite like that. Yeah, we're gonna go for this epic beard look. As for hair tone, I think think try and get myself as brown as possible so instead of an actual color chart they've got hair tone and blondness so you can make yourself extremely blonde with or very oh make yourself like an old man sort of whitish hair looks pretty epic so i want to try and go for like a dark brown color I kind of match my hair a little bit i think that looks good as for name, we are going to give this guy the name Spazzles. A very Viking name, as you know. Okay, and we're done. But Never used to be like this. Well, I used to always used to be able to use the name Spazzles. And for some reason, they... Banned it for a long while. Okay, I'm going to think of an actual Viking name that I can use. Be on Ironside. So, when you've created a character, you can either select Start New Game, or Start New World. I do already have a new world, which I'm using uh, in my own spare time. So, I will be starting a new game for the purposes of this video. Uh, so, you can either start a new game or join a new game. If you have a friend who already has a world, you can join them, obviously, if they give you your password. A lot of times, when you have these new worlds, have your own server and everything you do usually have to set a password or you just get that from your friend and you can just join their server so we're going to start that and get on with the game okay so now we're entering the world get a little cutscene. let's kind of give you a bit of backstory of where you are right now so the idea of the game is that you are a fallen viking who has been picked up by one of the valkyries sent by odin so i am actually assuming the the, the thing that's carrying us now is actually a valkyrie not quite what we've been depicted in the Norse mythology books, but I'll take it because it looks pretty cool. Also, it could also be either Hugin or Mugin because uh, it's very ravenish, um, this bird that's carrying us. It's, it's got like a humanoid kind of like look to it as well. So that's why I thought it might be a Valkyrie. But then it's got this raven outlook, you know, kind of look as well. So I, I know it's definitely not Hugin. Hugin's the, uh, we'll see in a minute. Unless that actually was Hugin that carried us just then. It could have been Hugin. Could have been Hugin that carried us. Okay, welcome to the 10th world. I am Hugin. I'm here to send you on your travels. Okay, so Hugin in the game is kind of like someone who guides you and gives you little hints here and there to kind of get you on the right path of obviously completing the game and just basically surviving. So we're going to look at this and get our mark for our first prey. So. Controls are pretty standard. If you are on the, the Xbox uh, X, if you go to graphics, you do have the uh, ability to change the graphic mode, which is pretty good. So if you want to set it to more quality, which obviously gives you better graphics, you can, or you can choose performance, uh, which will obviously give you a better frame rate. I'm so there's no lag or anything like that. And also you've got other selections for 
Bloom, Sunshast, uh, Chromatic Aberration, which I believe is like the reflection on like metal or rocks and stuff. A different field, all that kind of stuff. Also, one thing I will say, I, I had to change this when I first played this. Reduce the music volume down as soon as you start playing this game because, oh my God, this will blow your eardrums out. So I've really thankfully got it set from my previous save. So let's go out and uh, explore the world. So the first things first we're going to be looking for is some wood. So to start gathering wood, uh, you, you want to start off by I'm uh, getting the beach and then pressing RB on the Xbox controller. You just keep punching the wood. A standard survival game that you start. Okay, I gotta keep missing the wood. There we go. Now we've got some wood. We start making some equipment. Oh, we've got our first test of combat. Rail it. Oh yeah, I'm getting more and better at my boxing skill. Ah, oh, taste my fists. So one of the great things about this game as well is that when you gather, when you when you destroy it and pick up these items that are around in the world, so that be that uh, the branches and the wood, or if you destroy one of these uh, really small trees here, uh, anything you kind of like have to pick up. If you run over it with your character, you automatically pick it up, which is a great feature. Though doesn't always work. I've noticed sometimes in the game where it i don't know why but i think it's like when i get encumbered or go into a, 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 an instance of some sort it tends to break it sometimes i'm not entirely sure why that is or how to fix it i found i found that if you want to fix that if it's really bugging you you can just exit the game exit you know come back into it and it tends to fix it quite often that but that's an annoying way to fix it though i'm sure you can all agree gamers so another thing to notice in the game as well, you do have skills. Let's open up your skills. You press Y and you get three windows. To choose between the windows, uh, it's LB and RB. And if we check your skills, you just come over to this window and check skills. And at the moment, I've got fists, clubs, and blocking at the moment. And uh, as you unlock more tools and uh, items, you get more proficiencies that you can unlock with. Oh, Hugin's back. A Hugin, sorry. My lesser brother, Munin, tells me one can fashion a stone axe out of wood and stone so here it's kind of telling you yeah you need to be able to craft uh to craft you have basic craft um so we can make a club if you so want to but obviously we want to make a stone axe to kind of defend ourselves i think it'd be a bit better to have an axe rather than a club defend myself because then you don't have to sw i don't have to worry about switching various skills so even like jumping will give you skills so if i keep jumping for a little bit let me stamina go back up. So all of the skills, all the actions that you do in the game requires stamina. So there we go. I'm jumping around a little bit there and I've got a skill in jump. So the higher the skill you have, uh, the less stamina it requires you to do this. And also I believe uh, there's some other skills that you get in the game. So for instance, an axe. So you get an axe. Well, well, we'll be making an axe soon as well. I've got to find some stone first. Where is the stone? Let's go find some stone. So later on, you, you find axes uh, and such, and you get skills in them, and I think the skills in them as well also help deal damage. You can do more damage the more high skill you are. Tasty awesome. Oh, yes. So in a game, you constantly have a base health of 25. The way you can get increase this is by eating food. So there's no level up system in this, so to say. Obviously, that you increase your... Uh, your skills and certain proficiencies but you don't, there's no actual level up so the way you get more stamina and more health is by eating food so there's various foods um you can find we just found some uh mushrooms so if you want to eat food open up your inventory go to the one you want to eat press x and then you'll see in the bottom left you've got three boxes so there's three you can have up to three types of food eaten at any one time but it can't be the same food, though, unfortunately. It has to be three different ones. Oh, can I take on the boar? Can I punch a boar to death? Oh, we found some stone. I'm going to try and punch this boar to death. Oh, that hurt. Oh, that hurt. I won. I won, though. Let's go. I wouldn't try... Rec I wouldn't recommend doing that in real life, by the way, people. I wouldn't try punching a boar to death. I think it might not go as well as it did just then. So the game world is uh, procedurally generated. It's a little bit like Minecraft in that fact, actually. Uh, we have different biomes. Each world that you create will be completely different 
to another one you create. Oh, this is cool. Okay, so in the game as well, you actually do find remnants of like other civil like people that have lived here before. This is kind of cool. Right? It's kind of like off the ground a little bit. I like this. This is actually quite a good starting point. Like I can make this my little home, um, so I can build a workbench. So you are, uh, my goal in this video is going. We're going to get a workbench, and we're going to try and do the first prey. Uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name. I think it's like Ektir or something like that. Well, let me get the map up and I'll show Ektir or something. I think it's Ektir. I, I do apologize if I'm butchering that name. Uh, someone heard several pronunciations of Ektir. How, how how do you pronounce it, Grim? Uh, Ektir. Okay, so I think we have enough stone now. So we're going to do some crafting. So we're going to make ourselves a craft uh, craft and stone axe. So you need five foot four stone. So you literally just come over here, craft this, and that'll go in my inventory. Um, so to equip stuff in this game, you need to put things in. Your, open up your inventory. It has to be in the top row. Uh, the top row is all the things you can equip as like a hot bar sort of thing. So it's not an actual thing you set. It's just literally well, it kind of is you set it, but you set it as the top row of your inventory um, window. And to switch between the two, you use the directional buttons, and it's up to actually equip it and use it. And also, there is uh, you can holster it as well by pressing left trigger. And so later on, when we, if we get shield, which I'm hoping we do, because that will really help against the first prey, you can equip. You know, press up to use the axe and the shield. Have them both in your hands. Press LT, holster them, and put it on your back. And then you won't have to worry about pressing up and up on both items you just need to press the lt and pull them back pull both back out okay so now we've got an axe i think the next portal call is uh to make a hammer oh actually we've got enough to make a hammer okay so now we've got a hammer let's talk to hugin see what's going to say okay so here it tells you again this is where the uh the hints come in it tells you you need to make a workbench to get yourself started off so i'm going to make a workbench over by this house so to pull up all of the things you can make with the house so the hammer is what you use to create and repair everything so i'm actually going to repair everything oh, no i don't want to remove that oh i need a crafting station first okay so let's make myself the workbench so workbench i need 10 wood let's go make some more wood i'm gonna make wood i didn't know i can make wood i can grow wood but i can't make wood hmm a little disclaimer for you guys because i learned this the hard way when i was playing with my friends when you chop a tree down, make sure you don't stand underneath it when it falls. Because it will kill you. A bit like real physics. Like that. If I had stood underneath that, that would have absolutely destroyed me. Alright, so now we've got enough wood to make our workbench. Let's place our workbench now. Lovely. That's going to unlock a ton of more stuff. So, something to bear in mind as well. Make sure when you are in... we have got the hammer equipped to not press LB um because that will destroy things and you don't want to be doing that and it's a bit annoying uh the workbench allows you to craft complex items as well as giving you access to lots of more building pieces to construct with the hammer thanks hugin one little gripe i do have with this game and that's to do with the crafting and building aspect or the more, more of the building aspect of things so and i guess it's kind of realistic in a way as well uh, for, to some extent so when you do have your hammer equipped you can't actually if you place it down already you can't then pick it up and move it you then have to destroy it which it will give you back all of the materials but it's just slightly annoying that you have to destroy it and rebuild it my one little gripe about this game with the building so that's pretty cool as well was something I've, I've not actually noticed in the game before yet is uh, if buildings are damaged like you can see here the, the, this building is quite damaged. It, it actually looks visibly damaged as well, which is quite cool. So nice, nice little attention to detail there. I like that. If I was to destroy these support pillars that you see here, all four of them, this whole house would collapse. So you can't just put things in, like have them floating in mid-air sort of thing. You have to have like a an actual structure to, uh, and that's all like support system to the building itself. Okay, so one thing to notice as well about using the workbench. So if you want to be able to use a workbench, uh, for some reason, you need to have roof over it as well. Um, so you can either put the workbench in a house like this. Obviously, you can't do that. Um, well, you can do that. You can build a shelter around it. 
Or you can do something like this. I'll build like a an actual kind of like uh, workshop around it to actually get be able to use it. So when you actually have a roof, you can then use it, and this will allow you to craft uh, more tools and also repair all of your tools as well. So one thing I do love about this game as well, it does, it costs absolutely nothing to repair any of your armor or weapons or anything. It's completely free, so you can don't worry about resources about repairing your items you just come to a workbench and repair most of the things so the game does have its own day and night cycle as well so as you see it is night time so you don't really need a torch to be able to see but it does help a little bit when the temperature drops at night or if you are wet you will suffer from being cold this reduces your stamina regeneration so you seek, seek shelter by an open flame uh is your best bet and that will dry you up and get you nice and cozy Oh, wait, no, it's this way. Is it this way? Oh, holy fuck. I've, am I lost already? Oh, my. That was such a rookie mistake. I had a nice little house, built myself a workbench, and now I have no idea how to get back. Yeah, nice one. Get out of here. I want to claim my bed and go to sleep. So you can sleep uh, away the, the darkness, well, not darkness, but the nighttime cycle. Wake up feeling refreshed, rested. Um, so this is why it's quite important to have a home. So you get this buff called Rested. You can increase the duration. So to increase the duration of the Rested, you need to increase the comfort of your home. So this is by adding a bed, uh, furniture. So if, you, if I get the hammer back up, we have various furniture we can build. So a standing wood torch, chest. And you, as you progress through the game, you get more and more furniture that you can unlock and build. Um, so at the moment, you know, probably just want a chest at the moment to store some some of our uh, materials. So we need more wood for that. But the more comfort your house is, the more the the longer the rested duration will. So you start off with a base of eleven, and what the rested buff does, if you go over to Vihan Compendium, so it says here active effects. Uh, so the rested, you get health regen, stamina regen, and etir regen, which I'm not entirely sure what that is starting from very, very humble beginnings but soon fortresses oh get out of here get wrecked so for the combat in this game there is no um like target locking so you, you do have to kind of keep an eye on your crosshairs and use that to like this crosshairs so you have to aim your crosshairs at the enemy and make sure you're facing that enemy as well oh that's not my home oh uh that was not my home why why are you there take him on take him on oh oh ah uh, hey. oh man okay well that was not planned. Ah, oh, that's annoying. I was hoping not to die in this playthrough, but never mind. Okay, I suffered a mortal blow. Each time you're struck down, you'll forget a small part of your abilities and drop your belongings at the site of the accident. Oh, that skeleton's back. Uh-oh. Why is he faster than me? Why is he faster than me? Let me grab our stuff and get out. Oh, we still retain the portion of damage that we... So you can do a dodge roll by blocking. And also you can block with your weapon as well. Oh, get smashed. Get out of here. You are done. You are done, son. Good morning. Thank you very much. I like it gives you this last little message of when you wake back, when you wake up. He's like, oh, good morning. I, I, I don't know what it is. I can't I like that <laughs> for some reason. There we go. So now we can start making some actual gear. Uh, so now we've got the chopping block. We've upgraded the workbench to a level one uh, or level two, sorry, now. So now we can go out and start farming some of these deer to get their deer hide to make this level pants and tunics and stuff. Another thing I really like about this game is that the fact that your food doesn't spoil. Obviously, that does take away from the uh, realism of the game, but 
I actually prefer that the, that the food doesn't spoil because there's nothing more annoying than going out and getting all this like this meat and veg and whatnot, picking it up, having it on your on yourself, and then it going off in a couple you know, in a couple of hours or something, and you got to go find it all over again. Thankfully, there obviously there's no food or water um, requirements, so it doesn't, you don't have to eat if you and drink water. Um, so obviously keep alive like for grounding example in that game you have to eat food constantly you have to eat food and drink water otherwise you lose uh, your stamina and then if you really go into the starvation point you start losing health and die uh, in this game you don't have to worry about that which is quite a nice thing i think okay i think we're ready to take on the first prey now so we're gonna go we're gonna cook some food uh we're gonna Get ourselves some gear ready, uh, upgrade a few bits of the gear, and then we're going to head over and take on first prey, which is on our map, which is Ekthir. All right, here we are. We're at the shrine of Ekthir. Uh, calling forth the beast. You have found a summoning place for, of one of the Forsaken. Make the correct offering at their altar, and they will come. Be wary, though. The Forsaken are not easy prey, so craft a wicked weapon, don your finest armor, and eat a hearty meal before engaging them in combat. We have made the sacrifice. So I recommend having the music up for this. Oh, there he is. In all his majestic glory. Oh! This is why I would definitely recommend having a shield. This is so much easier with a shield equipped. Oh! This guy will hurt you. Luckily we had our shield up then, otherwise it would have taken big damage then. Oh! I have my shield up, but still hit me. Hit me hard. Still does a lot of damage. Even with the shield up. Oof. Ow. See, we just timed that just about right there, that attack. So, that block. So, it did like a little parry there as well. I think you block more damage if you parry as well. So, then we blocked. Oh, no. But it does take stamina though. When you block an attack, it does take up some of your stamina. A couple of more hits. Come on. Ah, oh, we've got him down. Let's go. Ah, oh, sorry, mate. You're dead now. Oh, there's you again. All these glorious birdness. Okay, congratulations, warrior. Return to the sacrificial stones with your forsaken trophy and offer it as a sacrifice to make the gods smile upon you. Okay, thankfully it's not too far away. It's literally just down here. Okay, so these are the sacrificial stones. So I think these are the forsaken. Each one of these represents a forsaken that you now need to hunt. Um, so the way to do this right now is you put the trophy in your top bar. You look at the um, trophy hook and attach it. And then once that activated, so you now can have the ability to use his power so if i activate his power you'll notice i now have his icon the trophy icon uh is now there with his name saying ready so what that will do uh so if i go to valheim uh Praetorium, uh so selected for second power uh so my ability to run and jump is now improved so my stamina uh for running and jumping is reduced by 60 percent uh, and I think to use that, you need to press both sticks in. And that will give you... Yeah, so now I can just run for absolute days on end without getting tired. And jump around and do all sorts of fun stuff. But that lasts for five minutes and there's a cooldown of 20 minutes for the actual thing to use again. So I think that's going to do it for today's video. I'm going to wrap it up here. So I'm now going to move on to the five reasons why you should download Valheim.
After playing the game for a few hours and combining that with the off-camera gaming sessions with friends, I can truly say that Valheim is a beautifully crafted world that's filled with mystery, danger and adventure. From the lush forests to the treacherous mountains, this game is a true testament to the power of exploration and survival. But what really sets Valheim apart from other survival games is its unique blend of crafting, combat and mythology. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So, without further ado, let's jump into the 5 reasons why you should download Valheim today. Open World Exploration One of the first things that you'll notice about Valheim is the immersive world that it creates. The game is set in a procedurally generated world that is inspired by North mythology. Valheim is set in a vast open world filled with various biomes, secrets and dangers. Players can explore the world freely, discovering new places and encountering all sorts of creatures along the way. Crafting and Survival In Valheim, players must gather resources, craft tools and build shelters to survive the harsh environments and hostile creatures they encounter. Valheim features an extensive crafting system that allows you to create weapons, tools and complex structures. You can build your own fortresses, homes and even boats to explore the seas. Cooperative Multiplayer Valheim can be played solo or with up to 10 other players in cooperative multiplayer mode. This allows players to work together to build settlements, explore the world and defeat powerful enemies, making for a fun and social gaming experience. Challenging Boss Fights The game features several challenging boss fights, each with unique mechanics and loot. Defeating these bosses requires skill, strategy and teamwork, making the experience incredibly rewarding. Mythology Inspired Setting Valheim is inspired by North mythology and the game's world is filled with references to Norse lore and legends and features a rich lore that you can discover through exploration and reading in-game texts. The game also has an atmospheric soundtrack that adds to the immersive experience. So those are my 5 reasons why you should consider downloading and playing Valheim on the Xbox Game Pass. If you're a fan of survival games or just love the Viking theme, this is definitely a game worth checking out. If you've played this game before, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And as always, keep on gaming gamers.